Air defense systems may be classified into three categories. These are strategic, tactical, and theater air defense systems. However, no air defense system is perfect because of several reasons like evolving threats, limited range, complexity of air defense systems, human error, system failures, and the cost of operating such systems. Different air defense systems have varying strengths and limitations and are often intended to work in certain circumstances. A long-range system, for instance, may be useful against high-flying aircrafts, but less so against low-flying drones. Therefore, numerous air defense systems may be necessary to offer protection against all conceivable threats. Here's where man-portable air defense systems come into play. It provides the last line of defense against threats that have escaped detection or survived all other air defense weapons in multiple mediums and are now closing in on the protected asset. These lightweight, shoulder-fired missile systems are meant to defend against low-flying aircraft and helicopters at close range. The primary benefits of man pads are mobility, low cost, flexibility, and ease of use, with deterrence being the most crucial since the sheer existence of man pads may prevent low-flying aircraft and helicopters. This may defend ground-based military troops and lessen the likelihood of aerial strikes. These systems are different from the man-portable anti-tank guided missiles, which are intended mainly for use against armored vehicles. They may also be used against certain kinds of aircraft under specific conditions. However, their efficacy against aircraft is limited when compared to dedicated anti-aircraft missiles or man-portable air defense systems. Last year, the Defense Research and Development Organization of India has successfully carried out two flight tests of its very short-range air defense system missiles. This is incredibly important news for India's defense establishment, but the story has been pushed to the background and has not been elevated to the status of breaking news despite its importance. At first glance, this missile seems to be quite similar to the American-made Stinger and the Russian Igla S system. There is a guidance system, a tail section, a propulsion system, and a warhead that make up the missile. But upon closer inspection, it reveals key differences, like for example, the Stinger missile and the Igla S missile uses plus-shaped fins which are actually an aerodynamic features of a missile, also called controlling surfaces, are used to control the missile's flight. They are absolutely necessary, because in order for a missile to respond correctly to guidance signals, it is necessary to stabilize its flight attitude. If the missile has deviated from its proper attitude and receives a guidance command, its control surfaces may not operate as intended and could cause it to move in an unintended direction. Here, we can tell the Indian missile does not have a plus-shaped control surface. Instead, it has a mid-body tapered wing. It is a type of wing design in which the wings are in the middle section of the missile and get narrower as they move towards the wingtip. This type of wing design is often used on missiles because it gives them better aerodynamic performance and stability during flight, especially at high speeds. The design of the tapered wings helps to reduce drag and increase lift, which lets the missile move around more effectively and efficiently. Also, having the wings in the middle of the body helps keep the missile's center of gravity in the best place which makes it more stable and easy to control. DRDO's very short-range missile also has a miniaturized reaction control system, which is a unique feature of this missile. A reaction control system is a type of attitude control system that uses small, low-thrust vernier engines to provide three-axis control of a spacecraft in the absence of aerodynamic forces. Yes, 
a reaction control system, can be used inside an atmosphere, where there is a presence of aerodynamic forces. However, it may not be as effective as it is in space, due to the presence of additional aerodynamic forces that need to be compensated for. In space, RCS thrusters are used to make small adjustments to the orientation of a spacecraft or satellite, which is necessary because there is no air resistance to provide natural stabilization. In contrast, when a spacecraft is operating within the Earth's atmosphere, it can use aerodynamic surfaces, such as wings and control surfaces, to provide attitude control. These aerodynamic surfaces are generally more efficient and effective for larger attitude changes than an RCS. However, there may be certain situations where an RCS could still be useful within an atmosphere. For example, if a spacecraft needs to make small, precise adjustments to its attitude in a situation where aerodynamic surfaces are not effective or available, an RCS could be used. Additionally, some spacecraft may have both RCS and aerodynamic surfaces, allowing them to use whichever system is most appropriate for the situation. The RCS in the missile can be used for fine-tuning the missile's attitude and trajectory during flight. It can still provide some level of control to the missile in case the aerodynamic control surfaces are damaged or malfunctioning. The RCS in these missiles can be useful during the initial launch and boost phase where aerodynamic forces are not as strong and the missile may require more precise control to achieve its desired trajectory. Additionally, the RCS can be used to fine-tune the missile's trajectory during mid-course corrections where minor adjustments may be necessary to maintain accuracy and avoid obstacles. Overall, while the RCS may not be the primary method of control for the missile, it can provide an additional level of control and redundancy to ensure mission success especially in situations where the aerodynamic control surfaces are not effective. The missile has a small solid rocket motor called a boost rocket that is attached to the back of the missile. Its job is to give the missile a quick burst of thrust at the start so that it can speed up quickly and reach its top speed as soon as possible. When the boost rocket runs out of fuel, it is jettisoned or separated from the missile as it is no longer needed. The boost rocket can be very important to how well the missile works because it helps the missile reach its top speed faster. This is important when the target is moving quickly like in aircrafts or a drone. Next, the missile has actuated fins, which are usually at the back of the missile and are used to control its pitch, yaw, and roll. The missile can change its flight path and head toward its target by moving the fins up or down, left or right, or in any combination of these directions. The missile's guidance system, which uses sensors and computers on board to figure out the missile's position, speed, and path, controls the fins that move. The missile has a dual-thrust rocket motor, which is different from a single-stage, solid-propellant rocket motor, such as the one used on the Stinger missile that provides a constant thrust throughout the rocket's burn time. The motor is designed to burn all of its propellant in a single stage, providing a fixed amount of thrust to the rocket for a predetermined duration of time. However, a dual-thrust rocket motor allows the rocket to accelerate more quickly and reach higher speeds than a single-stage motor. The high initial acceleration provided by the first stage can help the rocket overcome inertia and quickly achieve its desired speed, while the sustained thrust of the second stage can keep the rocket moving towards its target. Dual-thrust rocket motors are often used in larger rockets such as those used for satellite launches or space exploration where the rocket needs to achieve high speeds to escape the Earth's gravity and reach orbit or other celestial bodies. 
The missile is also fitted with a multi-band imaging infrared seeker, which is a type of sensor used on some missiles to find and track targets based on their heat signatures. This kind of seeker works by picking up the infrared radiation that the target gives off and using that information to guide the missile to the target. The multi-band part of the seeker means that it can detect infrared radiation at multiple wavelengths or bands. This lets it tell the difference between different sources of heat and improves the accuracy of the missile's guidance system. Some multi-band infrared seekers may also use other sensors like visible light cameras or laser rangefinders to improve their abilities. Once the infrared seeker has found and tracked a target, the missile's guidance system can figure out the target's position, speed, and path and use that information to guide the missile to the target. The missile usually has an explosive warhead that can be set off when it hits the target, destroying it.